the normal distribution is the most important and most widely used distribution in statistics it is also known as the gaussian distribution the objective of this session is to introduce the basic concepts of normal distribution we will not delve into the advanced properties theorems and derivations after attentively watching this video you will be able to use standard normal table to find normal probabilities and also you will know how to apply it in problems this class is arranged into the following sections first we will define normal distribution then we will see the various properties of normal distribution then we will discuss about standard normal distribution followed by some problems and we will conclude with a discussion on the importance of normal distribution to better understand the class familiarity with terms like random variables events etc is required also a basic knowledge of probability is assumed we often hear the phrase normally distributed data for example height birth weight of newborn babies blood pressure etc are distributed normally for normally distributed data the data cluster around the central value that is the arithmetic mean and the values away from arithmetic mean are less frequent so we can describe normality as the tendency of a data to cluster around the arithmetic mean now consider the example of height of a set of students in a class majority of the students will have height close to a particular value while number of students with height much lower or higher than this value will be very less this can be seen from the curve given on your screen now let me go bit back into basics to define the normal distribution more statistically we have heard about random variables random variable is a variable whose possible value is the outcome of a random phenomenon there are two types of random variables discrete and continuous random variables discrete random variable takes only countable number of distinct values number of students in a class and number of bicycles in a town are two examples continuous random variables can take infinite values height of students blood pressure etc are examples in the case of height of students even if we assume that the height is between 3 feet and 7 feet there are infinite possible values in this interval one or a group of outcomes of a random experiment is called an event probability is the likelihood of occurrence of an event for discrete data we can point towards the exact probability of an event for continuous data we cannot find the exact probability of an event 
but can only calculate the probability of an interval. Because when we say weight is 52.5 kg, it is not exactly 52.5 kg. If we have a more accurate weighing machine, we may get it as 52.53 in a further more accurate machine 52.534 etc. That's why we say for continuous data we cannot find the probability of a point instead we can find the probability of an interval only. A probability distribution is a function that describes the likelihood of obtaining the possible values that a random variable can assume. Normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution. The probability density function is the function which defines any distribution. For normal distribution, the probability density function or PDF is f of x equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi e raised to minus 1 by 2 x minus mu whole square divided by sigma square. And here the random variable x can take any value between minus infinity and plus infinity. Here in this probability density function mu and sigma are the parameters. Mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation of the distribution. If we plot the values of the random variable on x-axis and corresponding frequency or probability on y-axis, we will get the graph of a distribution. If we plot the normal data on a graph, we will get this shape. The shape of the curve is like a normal bell. Therefore, this curve, that is normal curve, is also called a bell curve. Now we will study some of the properties of normal distribution. The point on x-axis corresponding to a maximum height is the mod of the distribution. Therefore, normal distribution is unimodal. In the graph, the middle point is arithmetic mean. We can see most of the observations are near to the middle point. The curve is symmetric in nature. That is, if we fold it at the middle half, the curve will lie one over the other. Or, the area on the right side of the curve is exactly equal to the area on the left hand side. Therefore, the middle point is nothing but median. I presented the previous few slides to make you understand that for a normal distribution, the arithmetic mean, median and mode are the same. The total area under the normal curve is 1 or 100%. Since the curve is symmetric, the area on either half are 0.5 or 50%. The shape of the normal distribution depends on its mean and variance. The mean tells us about the center of the distribution. Standard deviation decides the flatness or peakedness of our curve.
now we are going to see how the shape of the curve changes when the mean changes when the mean changes the shape of the curve remains the same but the curve shifts to the left or right depending on whether there is an increase or decrease larger the standard deviation more is the spread and smaller the standard deviation less is the spread of the distribution when the spread increases the curve becomes more and more flat here the pink color curve is of normal distribution with mean 50 and standard deviation 10 the green colored curve is of normal distribution with mean 50 and standard deviation 5 since the total area of the curve is 1 any change in width should be compensated with change in height another important feature of normal curve is it never touches the x axis so theoretically it can take values from minus infinity to plus infinity now we are going to see 68 95 99.7 rule of normal distribution this is an interesting feature of normal distribution i'm going to explain it using an example consider the students of our college as the population suppose the mean height of the students is 5.5 feet and the standard deviation is 0.5 feet assume that we are going we are getting a normal curve or bell curve when we plot the data you can notice that the curve has maximum height at 5.5 that is maximum number of students have height close to 5.5 now what 68 95 rule says is number 1 approximately 68% or exactly 68.27% of the students in our college will have height between 5 and 6 the relevance of 5 and 6 is 5 is one standard deviation below the mean of 5.5 and 6 is one standard deviation above the mean of 5.5 please not one standard deviation here means 1 into 0.5 that is 0.5 here 68.27% of the population will have height between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the arithmetic mean in general we can say 68% of the observations will lie between the interval one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the arithmetic mean in case of a normal population now if we consider the interval two standard deviation below and two standard deviation above the arithmetic mean then 95% to be more accurate 95.45 percent of the observations lie in that interval that means 95% of the students in our college will have height between 4.5 and 6.5 feet if we consider three standard deviations above and below arithmetic mean a whooping 99.73% of the observations will lie within that interval here three standard deviation means 3 into 0.5 that is 1.5 now 
the natural question is can't be there a student with height greater than 7 feet or less than 4 feet in our college to answer that please understand that the normal distribution never touches x axis it can take any value from minus infinity to plus infinity but the area contained below 4 and 7 is very very small that is to our question number of students with height greater than 7 feet or less than 4 feet will be very small or almost nil this curve gives the regions we explained before in a generic way now we are going to learn about a special type of normal distribution it is called standard normal distribution standard normal distribution is a special case of normal distribution where mean is zero and standard deviation one when we say its mean is zero it means it is always centered at zero in the curve the numbers on the x axis are called z scores we can convert any normal random variable to a standard normal random variable if we know its arithmetic mean and standard deviation if x is a normal random variable mu its arithmetic mean and sigma its standard deviation then a given value of x say xi can be converted into a standard normal random variable using the transformation zi equal to xi minus mu divided by sigma the z score is positive if the data value lie above the mean and negative if the data value lies below the mean the advantage of converting a normal random variable to a standard normal random variable is using cisco we can calculate the area a given interval of z scores is associated with this area is nothing but the probability that is we can find the probability of being within the interval the probability in case of standard normal variable is calculated and is given in a table format which we call standard normal table it is available in almost all statistical textbooks it can also be calculated using microsoft excel or any other statistical softwares the standard normal table given on the screen gives the area under the standard normal curve from the middle point that is 0 to any given point the highlighted column on the left and row on the top together gives the z score that is the values on the horizontal axis of the normal curve the probability values are given inside i can say that this is is the body of the table now we are going to learn how we can find the probability from standard normal tables suppose we need to find the area under the shaded region or the probability of lying within the shaded region here the region is from 0 to 
here the value 0 is much significant. Here in the table displayed on screen, the probabilities are given from the point 0 to any given point. To find the probability from 0 to 1.11, first look for the point 1.1 in the first column. Then on the first row, look for 0 0.01, corresponding to 1.1 in the first column and 0 0.01 in the first row, the value we get is 0 0.1. 3665. Therefore, the probability from the middle point that is 0 to the point 1.11 is 0 0.3665. Now the question is, can we find the probability if the interval is not starting from the point zero. This is such an example. Suppose we need to find the probability within the interval minus infinity to the point 0 0.60. This region can be divided into two as minus infinity to zero and 0 to 0 0.60. We have the total area under the normal curve is 1. Also, the normal curve is symmetric. Therefore, the area from minus infinity to 0 is half of 1 that is 0 0.5. The probability from 0 to 0 0.6 can be obtained from standard normal table. The probability is 0 0.2257. For that, we need to look for 0 0.6 in the first column and 0 0.00 in the first row. The value corresponding to this row and column is 0 0.2257. Now, the probability of the interval minus infinity to 0 0.60 is sum of the probability from minus infinity to 0 and 0 to 0 0.60, that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2257 which is 0 0.7257. In another example, we are going to learn how we can find the probability from the point 1.2 to infinity. Here we cannot get probability directly from the standard normal table. We can get the area from 0 to 1.2 from the normal table. It is 0 0.3849. We have the total area from 0 to infinity is 0 0.5. Therefore, the probability from 1.2 to infinity is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3849 which is equal to 0 0.1151. Suppose we need to find the probability between minus 2.38 and minus 0 0.87. We do not have negative z-scores in our table. However, due to the symmetric property of normal curve, the area on the left side, that is negative part, is exactly equal to the area on the positive part. 
Therefore, the area between minus 2.38 and minus 0 0.87 is exactly equal to the area between 0 0.87 and 2.38. This area can find out by subtracting the area of the region 0 0.2 area of the region 0 to 2.38 from the area of the region 0 to 0 0.87. From the normal table, we can find that the area or probability between 0 and 2.38 is 0 0.4913. Similarly, the area between 0 and 0 0.87 is 0 0.3078. Therefore, the area between 0 0.87 and 2.38 can be obtained by subtracting 0 0.3078 from 0 0.4913. And this is equal to 0 0.1835. Therefore, the area between minus 2.38 and minus 0 0.87 is equal to 0 0.1835. Now the question is, how can we find probability of normal random variable and not standard normal random variable? If normal random variables are given, then to find the probability, the first step is to convert normal random variable to a standard normal random variable. This can be done using the formula z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma that is standard normal random variable can be obtained by subtracting the normal random variable by mean and dividing it by its standard deviation. Consider an example. A large group of students took a competitive examination and the final grades have a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 10. If we can approximate the distribution of these grades by a normal distribution, what percentage of the students first question scored higher than 80? Second question would pass the test that is grades above 60 and third question would fail the test that is grades below 60. Here mean mu equal to 70 standard deviation sigma equal to 10. To find the percent of students scored higher than 80 first we need to find the corresponding probability. Here x denote the score. Therefore, we need to find probability of x greater than 80. Here, to find probability of x greater than 80, we need to convert x to standard normal random variable. This is done by subtracting x by mean and dividing it with standard deviation. Probability of x greater than 80 can be written as probability of x minus mu divided by sigma greater than 80 minus mu divided by sigma which is equal to probability of z greater than 80 minus 70 divided by 10 that is probability of z greater than 1.
Now, this probability can be obtained from the standard normal table. Probability of z greater than 1 can be obtained by subtracting probability of 0 less than z less than 1 from 0 0.5. From normal table, probability of 0 less than z less than 1 equal to 0 0.3413. Therefore, probability of z greater than 1 equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3413 which is equal to 0 0.1587. This implies 15.87% students are expected to score above 80. In the second question, we are asked to find the percent of the students score 60 or above. Just like in the previous case, we are converting the probability statement in normal form to standard normal form. Probability of x greater than or equal to 60 equal to probability of x minus mu divided by sigma greater than or equal to 60 minus mu divided by sigma that is probability of z greater than or equal to 60 minus 70 by 10 which is equal to probability of z greater than or equal to minus 1. This can be calculated by splitting the shaded region into two parts as probability of minus 1 less than z less than 0 plus probability of z greater than or equal to 0. Probability of minus 1 less than z less than 0 that is probability of z lying between minus 1 and 0 can be obtained from standard normal table as equal to 0 0.3413 and probability of z greater than or equal to 0 is equal to 0 0.5 because of the symmetric probability property of the normal curve. Therefore, probability of z greater than or equal to minus 1 is equal to 0 0.8413. That is, 84.13% of the students scored 60% or above and passed the test. Now, the percent of students scored below 60% and failed can be easily estimated as 100 minus percentage of students passed the exam. The probability of a student failing exam is 1 minus 0 0.8413 which is equal to 0 0.1587. Therefore, the percent of students fail in the exam is 15.87%. Before concluding, I will explain why so much importance is attributed to normal distribution. This is because of the following reasons. Number 1. Many practical distributions approximate to the normal distribution as the sample size increases. Number two, there is a very important theorem in statistics named central limit theorem. It says, if we take a large number of samples from a population and calculate the sample means, then the distribution of the sample means will behave like normal distribution for all populations that is irrespective of the type of distribution the population follows. This has much significance in statistical inference which we will learn later. Number 3. The theory of sample tests like T, F, chi-square etc. is based on the normal distribution. And number 4. It is used in statistical quality control in setting up of control limits.
We have seen that normal distribution is a very important probability distribution and it has wide applications. If normal distribution has such huge significance, then the question is how frequent it is seen in nature. The reality is in real life many data types follows non-normal distributions. Some examples are bacterial growth follows exponential distribution. Survival time of products follows variable distribution. The house price data and income data are well described by log normal distribution. Oh, you have understood normal distribution and its basic properties. After this class, if you can write probability by referring standard normal table, then the objective of this session is accomplished. Thank you for your time and wish you all the best.